Now, we've already looked at how we create tables inside Microsoft Access. We've even looked at how do we handle creating a foreign key when we link one table to another using a lookup wizard. Well, now let's look at a relationship window. You might say, well, where do I find that? It's not listed on my side panel. And you're correct. I need to go to Database Tools. And this is a tab across the top, and it provides a whole new set of tools that we can run. And I'm going to look at Relationships. When I do, this is going to bring up every table that has a relationship by default. Now, now sometimes someone has gone in and they've made changes to this relationship window, and not all the relationships are going to show up. In that case, I can choose to show all relationships. If I click on that button, it's going to pop up. Notice I only have two tables right now, vendors and products. That's because those are the only two tables right now that I have that have a relationship. Notice that I only have three tables total, customers, products, and vendors. Customers does not have a relationship. If I click on add tables and choose customers, you'll notice that customers comes up, but it's not connected to any other table. There's no relationships at this time. Now we can add these later on and have these show up automatically. That's a different story. So let's look at what we do see here. So each table has its own box. Notice that at the top I have my table name, and then I have all of my columns, or if you prefer, attributes. If an attribute is a primary key, notice that it has a little key icon beside it. Now all three of these happen to have an auto number primary key and it's the only primary key. We do not have a composite primary key. So we're only seeing those. Let's take a look what happens when I add some new tables to the system though. Now I've gone and created a couple of new tables and you can see them listed on my left hand side. So now if I come over here to my relationships design, I can show all relationships and you notice they all pop up. There are some differences here and this is not necessarily the best layout because you notice I have lines that disappear behind things and it makes it a little harder to figure out. So I'm gonna reorganize this real quick. I'm gonna choose products and I'm gonna bring it down and notice this helps move so I don't have lines crossing over other lines. My line items can be a little bit closer and I'm gonna choose vendors and move it down. Rearrange this a couple more times, and now this is much more organized. I try to avoid having lines crossed if I can avoid it. It just makes it easier to read. Now, in some cases, it's impossible to have that, simply because of the complexity of the database. If you have a database with 40 or 50 tables, you're going to be stuck at some point. You're going to have lines crossing over. But for a database that only has five tables like this one, we can be a little bit cleaner. Notice that our lines show the relationship. The customer ID is a customer for my invoice. The invoice ID is linked to a relationship with my line items. Notice, however, my vendors and my products shows a slightly different line. It's a little bit bolder, and I see a one to infinity symbol on it. You might think, well, what's different about that? Well, I can select my line and double click on it. Notice I have my vendors and my products, and it automatically shows me my relationship type is one to many, and it knows this because the primary key to the foreign key and the foreign key is not part of a primary key, etc. It also sees that I'm enforcing referential integrity. And enforcing referential integrity is what's giving me that bold line. So this is just a way that Access lets us know, and I always like to enforce referential integrity. I don't want to delete a product that's attached to a line item because then I don't know what happened to that data. It's missing. I can choose to modify my enforce referential integrity, which is to say, hey, I'm going to update all my related fields or I'm going to delete related records. 
I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave information B. I'd much rather use that discontinue field or maybe an active field in order to show that it's not active anymore. That way I don't lose anything. I'm going to click OK. And so if I come here and look at my line items with my product, obviously the same product can be invoiced more than once. So it should be a one to many. And if I double click on it, notice that the relationship type does come up as one to many. That's exactly what I expected. What's not checked is this enforced referential integrity. Notice that the two sub options are grayed out because it's not being enforced. So I'm going to choose to enforce it and click OK. And notice I now have the one to infinity symbol there. Now each invoice can have multiple line items. So I should once again see a one to many. And I do. I want to point out that I can also choose to change the join type. And I can click on that and notice that it allows me to have an inner join by default. And this is what you're going to use most of the time. But you can also either include all invoices as well as line items whenever they're equal. And that would be like a left outer join or option number three. It's a right outer join. Now, like I said, most of the time we're going to use an inner join, especially in a relationship table. So I'm going to click OK, just leaving that be. Enforce referential integrity. Click OK. One more time for my customer relating to my invoices. And you might say, well, what's this create new? Well, I can open up a relationship and then I can create a brand new one by specifying what table and what my columns are. I don't need to do that. So I'm going to click cancel, click OK. And notice now all my referential integrities are set. Being a bolded line with that one to infinity makes it a lot easier for me to see. Now I could have a one to one relationship and that would be shown bolder if I had the referential integrity set on that as well. So the relationships window is great for letting us see the relationships between our different tables. In some cases, you'll see that I have, like I do with my products, I have links to two different tables. That's perfectly normal. I could have more. In my professional life, I've built tables that link to three, four, five other tables or more just in one specific table. Multiply that out by having 40 or 50 tables and your databases can get pretty complex. Now access because it is a desktop database generally is not suited for those really large and complex databases where you have 40 or 50 tables and each table has two or three relationships. That's a little bit rare. So you don't normally see that in an access database. A lot of times your access databases have 20 or less tables and that's fine too. It works on the exact same principles and we can see it here in an ERD type of format.